Scrolling along with Susan here with another project. I'm going to be using up some of my scrap wood that I have. I have a quarter inch walnut, sassafras, and maple. And I'm going to be putting them all together with double sided tape and securing all of them on the areas that I'm going to be cutting out. And I'm going to be doing a segmentation bird. And the reason that you have to make sure that you have plenty of coverage on your double-sided tape is when you start cutting out the small little pieces, you don't want them to fall out before you've labeled them, and then you're not going to know where they fit in. And the more complicated the pattern is, the more difficult it is to find out where it's supposed to go. My pattern that I'm using, I actually got out of the big book of wood and tarsia woodworking and it's the birds and berries of winter wreath and I chose one of the birds out of here and enlarged it and decided to use that for my cutting. You can also have a lot of inspiration in different areas. You can use the internet, you can use, I'm also a quilter so I have a machine applique book that I use and it's got some great ideas in here. And lots of times I'll use these as patterns for my segmentation. This is not an intarsia but a segmentation. Basically it, it is similar but there are a lot of differences and one of these times I'm going to be doing an intarsia um, video so you can see the difference. So here we go. Hopefully this video is not too fast but I'm showing you where I'm starting on the bird. And what I'll be doing is cutting out pieces to take out of the bird and then cut them separately. Like the wings are all going to be in one chunk, then I'll cut each piece of the wing separately. I want to do that because if I did not use double-sided tape on the entire piece to connect all three pieces of wood, it won't fall apart on me. And I can continue cutting from the body of the bird. Here you can see I am doing a little bit of veining, which means I'm using the scroll saw blade to cut lines in, but not to actually cut off a piece of wood. It's just for an accent. After I cut the main wing piece, I'm just showing you how it all kind of fits together. And then I'm changing blades. You have to do this often because it is about three quarters inch thick. So you'll probably go through a couple blades. I'm checking for that pitch, that ping on my blade, making sure that it's adjusted properly and can be tightened properly. As you can see by this video, it is much easier to cut the other parts of the bird when you're holding on to the whole unit and cut each piece now separately. I cannot stress enough on this last part how important it is to label each piece on the back with the number that's on the front because once you start taking off the tape and you have all these little pieces of wood everywhere you're not going to remember many times where it goes so make sure you are writing and I just use pencil on the back you can use whatever you want on the back to show the correct number for each piece and then of course you take off all the tape and lightly sand and then we get to the next part which is the fun part when you're mixing and matching the pieces of wood together to create your birds. 
I'm using Gorilla Super Glue on this. You need to put a dot about every inch or on all sides. Hold firmly together so that it will adhere and you want to work fairly quickly on this. Then the next step is to draw on the outside um, of the whole piece so that you can cut out about an eighth of an inch around so that you can cut your backing. Now I am cutting out the backing for my birds and then I will be gluing them up to the main body parts and of course you have to let it sit for a while to dry and then it's time to do the wonderful sanding. Make sure you have coverage over your mouth and nose. I use 220 grit on this one and I use a hand sander for the main part and then I will use individual sanding sticks to smooth it out. Now I'm going to be drilling the hole for the eye. I round off the end of my dowel and then cut three of those and then paint them with black paint. Place them in and then it's time to put the polyurethane on. I use two coats of this. Two to three will be plenty. After it dries, I need to talk about putting something on the back. And I chose to make these into kitchen magnets. So I have uh, magnets that I that have a stick on there on uh, that stick on the back. Well, I've really enjoyed making these segmentation birds. I hope that you've learned something from this. I've learned from my own mistakes here. Two things. One would be the maple was just slightly bigger, thicker than a quarter inch than the other two, and it caused a lot more sanding. Also, I would go thinner than a quarter inch for my next project so the pieces fit a little bit better. There are a couple slight little gaps that I wish were not there, so I live and learn. Also, if you want to put a different backing on it, you can always buy uh, ring hangers and picture frame pieces to hang on the back. Just make sure that they don't poke all the way through and ruin your project. If you like what you see, please click that like button and subscribe to my channel. And I would love to see if you decide to try to make some segmentation. I'd love to see them down in comments. Thanks so much.